mới. Hello everyone and welcome live broadcasting on Alatra TV. Uh, today, as yesterday and the day before yesterday, we are traveling from one country to another and today we are welcoming Sudan. Um, this is live broadcasting as we mentioned and uh, the program is called Six Degree of Connections. In this program we are talking about different countries, about their traditions, culture, best features and most important and interesting things about this country. And the whole idea and the whole program of Six Degrees of Connections is aimed to unification of people all over the world. In the basis of this uh, program was laid the theory that all people are interconnected between each other within six handshakes. So we're checking this theory and welcoming you and encouraging you also to participate in this program. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we are in Sudan today and we have two guests from Sudan today. This is Hanan and Ismail. Welcome everybody and we're beginning. Uh, so uh, maybe to begin with volunteers, either Ismail or uh, Hanan, please tell us about a little bit of your country, about your traditions, most interesting and most important um, things that you would like other nations and other people in the world, world know about your country, things that you are proud of and ideas that you would like to spread to the world. This is at the beginning and um, in the second part of our today's live broadcast and we are going to talk about creative society, of how people in Sudan envision creating society and their ideas on this occasion. Then we'll also continue from our side talking about this. Uh, so please, Ismail or Hanan, who would like to begin with? Okay, as you like. Um, yes, please. Ismail, if you need to start or shall I start? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Hanan Al-Amin. Uh, thanks uh, very much, very of all, for this uh, introduction and uh, for this interview as well, and introducing us to Alantra Group, uh, which is an amazing one and an amazing experience even for me uh, to know about Alantra. Uh, and thanks to give the floor today for Sudan. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, really, we need to know each other. We need uh, this such of intervention and uh, to know about the culture and uh, even the heritage uh, Sudan maybe have uh, like starting from the Sudan or, or, or the wide space area, it has 18 states, uh, eastern part and western, central, southern, northern part. Uh, each state maybe has a huge population dynamics, and uh, this might maybe dynamics uh, and uh, separation of these states uh, belonging uh, as the governorate system to manage out uh, the resources there and at the same time uh, the, the, the culture of the people there because they need to have such uh, like uh, uh, one uh, maybe voice uh, life. Uh, for example, if we have those in the eastern part have their uh, own dynamics, way of life, uh, pastoralists uh, mostly, and uh, or maybe grazing in the sea area. And uh, we have here in the northern part, because it's uh, mostly like uh, desert or semi-desert area, uh, but they are, uh, uh, th there are some areas, especially on the shoreline or, 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 the, or the Nile River uh, shore, uh, they have like uh, such agricultural activities. Uh, there are also the western part, uh, we have the Dark Korean uh, five states, uh, had their own activities, mostly in trade and pastoralism and agriculture in uh, some areas. Uh, we have also in the southern part, the southern part actually is mostly rich, rich with uh, especially in the, in the environment. They facing uh, rainfall most of the years, maybe or most of the months of the years, uh, like five to six months. 
and it is uh, very so green uh, rather than the northern part or western part or eastern part. Um, uh, for that, uh, this is maybe the dynamics of the pressure and the distribution of uh, population uh, there. Uh, we find uh, also, uh, rather than the activities, and uh, there is uh, much uh, natural resources uh, Sudan have, uh, not just uh, within mines, and uh, but also we have uh, the gold, yeah, the as minerals, and uh, we have maybe pesos. We have uh, like uh, all all minerals like uh, copper and. Um, uh, cobalt and zinc, uh, uh, many, many minerals uh, in, in, in shaping format. Uh, we have groundwater, we have like deserved groundwater, uh, but not too much because really, unfortunately, people of Sudan depend mostly uh, on the groundwater. Uh, some, yeah, are depend on the rainwater for, for rainwater uh, fall. Uh, but it's like um, it's not deserved for all the years, uh, and they have to find another sources like those wells and underground aquifers. Uh, the, for other activities, also we find the animal resources. Uh, there is mostly in the southern east part, and uh, there is uh, also uh, maybe the, um, uh, the, the we find the, the oil. Uh, but it's mo mostly coming from the southern part, which has been like a joint venture with uh, uh, South Sudan. And but nowadays, maybe uh, they are uh, exploring such wells uh, in the eastern part. Um, this is maybe commonly uh, of the of the natural resources. Uh, we have like parks, uh, the reserve parks. Uh, around like 14 uh, or more uh, in the land uh, as a land park uh, and we have like three uh, on the marine area uh, we called it uh, especially maybe non commonly and under uh, uh, IUCN heritage it's called IUCN uh, uh, heritage uh, which is announced uh, this Sangane uh, atoll uh, uh, area or Atoll Park, which is uh, uh, in the sea, actually, it's uh, the fairest or, or, or just the unique atoll in the Red Sea. Uh, the atoll, this is coming from the such uh, parts of the coral reef because it has uh, many dynamic shapes. Uh, this is the atoll is one of the shape of the coral reef. Uh, for that, we can find many, many tourism area or many tourists are coming to Sudan from time to time, especially in the northern part uh, of Bajrawiya and uh, uh, the, uh, to uh, this area, which is famous uh, really uh, of this uh, pyramid. Um, actually, the, the civilization is coming uh, from Sudan, first of all, uh, as uh, of the history. Of, of the pharaonic, uh, maybe the Egyptians are not uh, having it like uh, very uh, uh, like uh, transparent way, but uh, we we know that very much it's coming uh, from Sudan. It starts from Sudan, then it, it, it goes up up to from the uh, with the Nile River stream uh, from the lower stream up to the upper stream to have this uh, uh, big pyramid um, in the area of uh, Egypt, uh, the uh, what do we call Giza area. Um, but um, uh, you, you may be asking uh, a question, which is like, uh, the, uh, like a brilliant one. Uh, how we can ensure that um, uh, the creativity of the people, the creativity of the youth, yeah? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but before we move to the second part, let's yeah. concentrate on the first part and ask um, um, Ismail what makes him proud about Sudan? 
and watch collage that our designers prepared. So we are not only talking about Sudan; yeah. we also can see it because it's yeah. much easier like to understand what are you talking about when you see it with your own eyes. And um, when you were telling me, I was able to recognize that exactly we have that yeah, right. collage, and I also wanted to, for our viewers to see it because those yeah. pyramids are very interesting and. If I'm not mistaken, in Sudan you have them like more than 200, like I think 260 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. So and right now you can see that. I, I, I just I would like to add something very very important that mm -hmm. uh, what I would like uh, in Sudan. Uh, Sudan like has uh, people and uh, living in a very uh, peaceful dynamic really. Uh, they have full harmonization of coordination and supporting way of life. Uh, we call it takaful. Takaful, that means even in Islam, that means to support each other, even your neighbors, your families, like uh, the, the long roots of your families, grandpa and grandma, and all of them. Uh, and uh, to have uh, like um, uh, uh, full support, maybe not just financially, but even spiritually and uh, to deal even with the kids and uh, to know each other like uh, th th this uh, we call it uh, like the connectivity of the of the society uh, which means that there is a wisdom there is a, there is a, a talent coming from the grass roots uh, of our grandpa and grandma till now thank you thank you very much thank you very much Hanan. so it's thank a very you. It's a very nice to hear that people are um, have a tradition to help each other to understand yeah. each other. So that's it. That, that's a very good. Yeah. I would like to add also that every uh, every religion is teaching us to be more human, to love each other, to attitude each other with respect and dignity and for maybe for Hanan and for Ismail, if you haven't had a chance to know about it yet. But um, one of the uh, TV projects, uh, which is going on on Alaska TV, is called Islam is the religion of love. Uh, there are like about, I believe, 10 episodes already of this program. And we are also actively broadcasting these people. And we have, because among our participants, we have people from various religions. If you don't mind, I will continue a little bit. And Ismail, we would like to ask you after that, um, share your uh, opinion of what you like and what you proud of in your country most of all. In Ukraine, for example, well, to begin with, Ukraine is situated in Europe, in this, let's say, geographically, the central part of Europe. But um, indeed, uh, Ukraine, uh, is a very diverse country because at this moment I would guess that right now in Ukraine we have um, nationalities and national minorities from various parts of the world and there are more than 168, just to imagine, 168 nationalities and national minorities living in Ukraine. In Ukraine we also have like all kinds of religions big world religions like Christianity, Islam, Buddhist, national religions uh, like Judaism, all almost actually all branches of Christianity, of Islam. And what makes me proud, for example, of my country that uh, Ukraine is one of the most peaceful countries in the world because we've been living with people from different uh, ethnic minorities, ethnic like nationalities, uh, with different religious affiliations, we've been living on the same territory for centuries. And we never had any kind of conflict between each other based on either uh, national or religious background, which makes me really proud that uh, respect to other people, to their beliefs, their cultural background, their nationality, traditions, religious affiliation, their opinion, as we say, in our blood. 
because we've been living together like for many many centuries and we're still friends um we have mixed families when people from different religions but at the same time you know they are celebrating like holidays from one side and from another side and it is very interesting because uh in this sense you're getting to know the culture for example of your husband or your wife um i myself a ukrainian but i was born in kazakhstan my wife is um well kazakhstan is pretty much islamic country my wife is ukrainian but she was born in azerbaijan which is also an islamic country and you know living in such let's say atmosphere makes us um think that indeed regardless of any like nationalities religious beliefs uh, background we're all uh the same people because uh any religion is teaching us first of all love love to god uh respect to your family your parents like your big family in the big meaning uh also your friends people around you um and it is from my point of view it is you no know, nice it really makes me proud that i am a ukrainian and i'm sharing this um Mm, beliefs i'm sharing this um ideas of humanity and maybe let's say tolerance to people from any part with any ethnic background and so on that i think <laughs> thank you so much kostya i think our next broadcast will be about ukraine Mm-hmm. and we found the perfect speaker who will present and like proudly can explain us and um bring us on that journey around ukraine kostya so that thank you so much for sharing if we would know <laughs> would do it in like advance we will put on our mainstream screen so sudan ukraine <laughs> thank you so much so i wish yeah, thank you, you. <laughs> It was very nice. We never did it before. Usually we ask our guests but never telling our guests about our countries where we are like from. Thank you very much. And um technical support. Could you please uh, show us the uh, arrest of collage that we have and Ismail would you be able to comment on them what you see and also uh, tell us what makes you proud? What do you like the most about Sudan? Maybe uh, people, maybe tradition. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Ismail Mahmoud from Sudan. And uh, when saying, when I'm saying I am from Sudan, you can see those pyramids and those pictures. They are in the country where I am from, and that's that makes me feel very proud of. And um, Hanan has already covered a lot about the tradition and the custom that we have, and I don't want I, I don't want to talk about that. So that's I repeat what she has already said. But I want to talk about what I like most about um, the Sudanese people from within, and how do they feel toward each other and toward the foreigners and all the people. Um, we are very welcoming, and that's what makes us very beautiful. We welcome anybody to come and join us in our home. We don't mind anything for, to do for other people, and we help each other. Um, the kind of help that we are doing right now in Sudan um, through this tough time, we help each other. Though um, everything is very expensive and the life is very hard, and as you know, like. Um, In Sudan, we, re- we live, or most of the people, they live a very simple life. So if we don't help, help each other, then um, no need to have that better society and that creative society. Um, another thing I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about if we are having different religions, we're still sharing the same humanity. So I'm a Muslim, others Christians, ethnics, whatever, We still share the same humanity. We help each other. We give a hand to each other. So in Sudan, we believe in helping others, um, regardless their ethnicity, regardless their religions, regardless everything. We help each other, and that's what I feel very proud of when it comes to Sudanese people. So um, 
we help each other, we go forward, we have a um, good heart toward others. Um, I can see those pictures that shows um, the animals that we guard in Sudan. And um, mind you, this elephant has disappeared in Sudan, uh, but it used to be there um, very long time ago. We have uh, animal resources in Sudan. We have um, agricultural um, aspects. We have um, people who can work as farmers and all these things. And that's what makes us very rich when it comes to um, um, uh, having an agriculture that can support our country. And um, in Sudan, uh, most of the people, um, they believe that having each other's, by each other's side, we can achieve more in Sudan. And though we are having, we are passing through a hard time, but definitely we're not going to give up on our country. And um, the last thing I want to mention is I feel very interested to visit Ukraine after my brother has already talked about the tradition and the custom and everything you have there. So now I'm looking forward to come there and see um, Ukraine and Ukrainian people and the good heart and the welcoming and everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ismail Kostya. I think yes. we need to think seriously about broadcast about Ukraine. And at least right now to invite people to join uh, uh, Ukraine virtually. So. <laughs> there was actually one thing that I wanted to add because um, when um, Ismail was talking about uh, religion, that indeed every religion is teaching the same. Um, some memories, ideas from past flashed in my mind. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a chance to interview the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Um, we spoke with Dr. Arun Gandhi. And once he said that uh, his grandfather used to repeat all the time that um, every religion is teaching the same because uh, following one or another religion is like climbing the mountain because we're ultimately all going to the same peak. So it doesn't really matter which side of the mountain you choose to climb because we actually in the end have to come to the same thing, to the same idea that God is love and we are all sharing did the same uh, human values and these are the things that we need to have and uh, share and follow all over the world. So that's what came to my mind when I was listening to Ismail. Thank you. Yes, Kostya, and I fully agree with you. And I also understand that in, for, in order for us to have this appreciation, to have this understanding between people, between cultures, between religion, we need to have a good education. So without that, without well-educated people, we will not be able to achieve it. That's why when I'm thinking about creative society, for me, the education plays the very important role. So, and I really wish that people from around the world will have um, that um, very like high quality education, starting from the grade one or even in the kindergarten. But like absolutely accessible, free in every single city where they live so they don't have to travel to another country they don't have to um maybe uh, struggle and think how they will be able to uh sustain it financially so everything should be available for every person who have like feel that he or she has that potential to study and um pursue the profession that he or she has a talent and not because like that she, when he or she will choose the profession, it will, okay, I will, would like, for example, um, I don't know, the engineer or doctor, because I know that later I will earn a lot of money and not because I would like to help people or I feel like I have talent for that profession. And um, this is very important too. So, and what do you think about education? Me? Maria, me? Anybody 
who are I present. Can begin. I can begin uh, because, for example, education. Um, well, as for me, education, this is, um, let's say, a very big part of my life because I'm an educator myself. I'm a PhD and associate professor. I've been in education for uh, 19 years already. Almost 20 will be this year. Um, the role of education, I would say, is um, absolutely vital. Um, sometimes we don't understand uh, the importance of education, but I would say education uh, in like narrow meaning and in the broad meaning, because in the broad meaning, education also includes upbringing. Um, sometimes we understand education that uh, getting to know or learning some skills, be able to read, to write, to calculate on the paper or in mind, uh, getting some skills like computer skills or communication skills, and so on and so forth. But for me, education is not only uh, teaching or getting or acquiring some knowledge. For me, education is, first of all, is upbringing, the process of upbringing. And here, um, it is very, very important to have creative society because with the help of education, through education, through teaching our kids from the kindergarten and going to the university level, that indeed we are living on the same planet, which is our common home. We are sharing the same human values. And one of the first human values is, of course, life. And indeed, we're actually one big same territory, uh, sharing the same ideas, indeed sharing the same beliefs, maybe a little bit different taking into account history, culture, traditions, uh, neighbors, but indeed we're all the same. And I believe that in creative society, well, how I, first of all, I would explain to other people who are watching us how I understand personally what is creative society. Creative society, from my point of view, is a society where, where we are all living comfortably, safe, and um, where we are able to develop our best uh, personal and professional skill. That's how I understand the society where we all live peacefully, comfortably, and safe. In this society, the role of education, in creative society, the role of education is absolutely vital. And I believe that, first of all, education should be absolutely free everywhere. Education should be aimed, first of all, to upbring the best human qualities in every child. Because when we understand that we're all the same, regardless of color of skin, language, religious affiliation. We're all share the same human values, like life, respect to each other, uh, friendship, uh, peace, and of course, mutual understanding when we're doing, let's say, common projects which are aimed to benefit absolutely every, every single person. I grew up in the family, in the Ukrainian family, Christian family, but I was born in Kazakhstan, which is uh, like 90% Islamic country. And all my friends indeed actually were from different religious background because they were about like uh, in our city where we used to live, it is not a big city. Uh, there were about like 68 uh, no, 76 nationalities. <laughs> when I studied in the United States, I studied also in the college where uh, there were students from all over the world. There were about like 1,200 students from various parts of the world. And I used to hang out a lot with guys from Africa. 
uh, that was very interesting. And for me, it was, again, vital to understand that no matter where we've come from, no matter what our ethnic or national background, we are all still the same. We all have common values. We all have um, interesting topics to communicate and talk about, and we are all going to the same uh, aim. And that yes. aim is to become... Thank you, Thank Thank you so much for sharing, but I would like to ask our guests also, like Hanan, how do you envision creative and, con and constructive society? In what yeah. world would you like to live in? Mm -hmm. Uh, when we, we, we talk about education, it's, education is not just uh, like the formal syllabus uh, which we have here in kindergarten or schools or universities. Uh, but as our colleague from Ukraine mentioned, yeah, it's, uh, we have to look uh, on, 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 how to, on how to let this basic of education, like uh, let people or let generations more creative. Uh, or to support them, to empower their, their, their skills, to empower their talent, and uh, to do what they need or, to, or, 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 or they need to, to experience. Like, uh, for example, we have the handicraft, we have uh, uh, the technologies, we have uh, uh, this creativity and innovation, especially through youth and uh, universities. Uh, they are they are telling us that the, the, the syllabus is not enough that we are creative more uh, we uh, more enough to do something or to do that especially with IT uh, those who are uh, playing with IT or dealing with IT uh, they, are, they are very creative really day by day and and, and they doing a lot like programs and uh, solving even hackers or uh, any, any sort of problems like getting uh, people or community. Uh, but uh, really, we, we, when we talk even about creativity, we have to think better about the environment. The environment, that means it has an effect uh, towards uh, people, and the people even affect the environment. So it is vice versa, uh, like not just an equation, but it's the vice versa tools to, to, to to deal with life uh, on, on, on a daily basis. Uh, that means the environment affects mostly those creativity or creative people. Uh, those creative people coming from a certain environment. We are, we, we are having it real very much here in, uh, in South Sudan. Uh, those who are living in, in rural areas, it was very simple environment is clean, uh, no even distortions or, or, or uh, or, or, or even now uh, noising, uh, you can find those are playing with art or uh, telling art and telling poems or, 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 or having such creativity with technologies and uh, uh, even with their thoughts and imagination. Really, it's very amazing. We have to deal with such issues. Uh, when we are uh, talking on creativity, that means peace building. Uh, creativity needs uh, the harmonization needs the peace environment uh, to deal with because if there is no peace environment you can not give even or, or uh, um, even though to, to be creative uh, really uh, if you and, and under certain circumstances of of of, uh, of, of hazards or, or, or even anything like that can uh, let you in dispute or something you are not going to, to be creative uh, more um, so maybe this is uh, my point of view in uh, creativity. Creativity, uh, creativity also by the end is going to affect the marketing area. Uh, it's going to let uh, that there is uh, like a uh, high uh, maybe uh, income uh, from the market, like because if there is a creativity that means uh, there is such industries, there is such uh, uh, innovation in it, is coming up. There will be an export of the countries, and by the end, uh, the, the GDP of the country is going to raise and be scaling up. So that means, uh, and that this should is going to start from the education itself, not just uh, with, uh, what I mean, uh, or, or uh, uh, like before, uh, I, I meant that it's 
not like just an informal education that we are talking of, yeah, of non-formal education, not just the formal education. So creativity, education, and uh, uh, by the end, the empowering uh, of the society and uh, and uh, to, to have like, uh, or, or to deal with its, its natural resources and to have it uh, like uh, uh, in, in such of trade and uh, uh, income, uh, that means uh, there will be like a uh, creative society by the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hanan, for sharing your understanding about creative society. And Ismail, could you please um, tell us how um, how you envision creative society? Okay. Um, before going to talking about the creative society, I just want to drag my ship a little bit back and talk about education and uh, how I see it. Um, well. Uh, education is like, for me, is like a bag which is good from outside, which looks good from outside and inside. Because um, there are a lot of people who have been educated themselves very well, who are very educated, but they don't know how to deal with, with each other. They don't know how to solve our problems. They don't know how to face life's challenges. So that education should bring the best and you out so that you know how to deal with people like it's not about the knowledge that you have in your mind but it's further more about the way you use that knowledge you have already acquired and um then you met it then you look forward to help others and um you can have that better society. I want to talk about education from the creative society point of view. And I want to tell that, as my friend has already mentioned, education should be free all over the world. Like this is our rights. We have to have our rights and be educated. Because if we are not educated, then um, how can we go forward and um, have that creative society that we are all dreaming of to get? Um, uh, the creative society is the way of having the life that anybody in this life feels happy. And when we all feel happy, that means now we have reached to the max of the creative society. The creative society is the way that we feel like others need our help and then we help them. Uh, creative society means... Um, we stand by each other side and we build our own home. Um, let's imagine we're all holding a basket of eggs. If one of us cannot hold it tightly, definitely the eggs will be damaged and then we lose ourselves, we lose our life. So let's, let's um, uh, consider the creative society in that basket of eggs and we have all to take care of that basket so that our ex cannot be damaged. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ismail, for sharing with us. Um, that I, I also, I absolutely agree with you. And dear viewers, we have um, uh, one of our guests that joined us just, yeah, Andu. He uh, it was one of our guests from the last week. Welcome back, Andu. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, unfortunately, you are just connected to us and we have very, very interesting conversation today. We learned about um, Sudan, we talk about Ukraine, we talk about different cultures and different religion and how people can um, live together, how people can cooperate, how we people envision creative and constructive society. So um, it was a very interesting conversation. And uh, if you will have a chance, please go online and uh, watch that broadcast from the beginning. So, yeah. um, so you can share us um, your um, feedback about today's broadcast. But uh, yeah. mm, thank you very much. Uh, you know, 
I have uh, prepared a team here with Robert and Charles, and only the, 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 the challenge we had here, it, it was very rainy, and it we were unable to, to connect. I'm not supposed to be a speaker, but mm -hmm. we came to a house of a good friend of ours who has a good network, but because of the rain, because it was cloudy, uh, I, uh, our group cannot participate. So we hope next time we, we, we can really, so I can just be a good uh, listener, I can hear, mm -hmm. and I wish all the rest of the people uh, good participation and everything. Maybe next mm -hmm. time, yeah, thank you. I yeah. yeah, thank you so much, and we like, really hope that next time we can do it and we can see and listen to um, that presentation that you and your friends prepared for us. Right, friends? And uh, dear viewers, if you would like to learn more about this project, Creative Society, please visit our website, alatraunites.com. On that website, you can uh, press the button join and choose your language. And uh, leave us the comment, leave us your understanding of the society, how you envision creative and constructive society, and we will be more than happy to contact you. Also, if you would like to become our next guest and present your country, and tell us more about the best tradition that you have, the best um, examples that you were facing in your country of like how people cooperate with each other, how people can uh, like, like work each other, how um, you and your friends envision creative society. So please send us an email to info at alatra.tv and don't forget to share this video with two hashtags, creative society and alatra unite. That will help us to spread that idea, that knowledge that there is a possibility, there is a platform on which every single person on earth can join and in online, in a live video broadcast, share the most interesting fact about their country and of course his or her vision about society. So dear friends, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for your time and the understanding and your knowledge that you shared with us. We truly hope that we will continue our friendship and continue our cooperation and um, we really 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 hope that we can probably say that we know every single person in Sudan despite all difficulties with weather and internet connection <laughs> so I think there is nothing <laughs> possible for us and thank you so much Constantine for your debut today and we hope that next time you will bring us to Ukraine <laughs> Thank you for inviting yeah. me. <laughs> Thank you, Liliana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, much, guys. It was like it was very nice to meet you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Good you. To bye. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see you next time. Thank